It's one of the smallest, poorest countries in Europe. A Connecticut-sized slice of rugged mountains, untouched forests, and deep gorges that's home to a mere 620,000 people. At only 13,812 square kilometers, Montenegro is the sort of place the word diminutive was coined for. As German magazine Berlin Political Journal once memorably put it, it's a country with fewer people than Frankfurt and a gross domestic product on par with the Bavarian town of Bamberg. Yet tiny Montenegro today is something neither Frankfurt nor Bamberg, nor anywhere else for that matter, can claim. Since 2022, it's been home to one of the most expensive stretches of road in the entire world. Running from the capital of Podgorica to the village of Madashevo, the A1 highway is an engineering marvel. Dotted with 20 bridges and 16 tunnels, it sweeps drivers effortlessly through the nation's stunning landscape. But this scenic drive has come with a heck of a price tag. Financed with a massive loan from China, Montenegro's road has left the country $1 billion in debt, and for a while at least, teetering on the edge of bankruptcy. Today, we're exploring how one Chinese-built road nearly sank a nation's finances, yet still, somehow, remains unfinished. So, when the first stretch of the Bar to Balearia Highway opened in 2021, two years behind schedule, almost anyone could agree on a couple of things. The first is that the road was spectacular. An imposing line sliced cleanly across the Montenegrin landscape, a landscape famous for being anything but flat. Covered with low mountains and dotted with deep gorges, this tiny nation crams in nearly as much spectacular scenery as far bigger Switzerland. Building a gleaming, direct road across its rumpled countryside was a miracle of engineering. The second thing everyone could agree on was that this miraculous road had not come cheap. With a GDP of 5.86 billion American dollars, Montenegro has long been one of the poorest countries in Europe. While their small population means people are richer per capita than bigger economies like Moldova or Albania, it's still not the sort of place that can afford to waste money on giant vanity projects. Which may be why the new highway was so controversial. Costing a billion dollars, the road was easily the most expensive building project in Montenegrin history. The equivalent of taking 1,600 euros out of the pocket of every man, woman, and child in the country. Yet this eye-watering price tag was hardly unexpected. With such an unforgiving landscape, the builders have been forced to construct less a regular highway and more a spectacular collection of soaring bridges and tunnels bored through thick rock. Only 40% of it was made up of what we might call regular road. Still, despite the expense, President Milo Dukanovic and his supporters were bullish on the advantages that it would bring. Before we continue with today's video, let me share something with you that is quite close to my heart that life can throw you curveballs, and for many, one of them is hair loss. Many just like me. But fear not, because today's video is proudly sponsored by Keeps, a game changer in hair care. Keeps is an online subscription service and is revolutionizing male pattern baldness management. Say goodbye to awkward doctor visits and empty promises from over the counter products. With Keeps, you receive expert care and personalized, clinically proven treatments from the comfort of your own home. It's all about convenience. Keeps connects you with licensed medical providers to create a personalized plan, delivering it right to your door. You can choose a delivery schedule that suits you, whether it's every three, six, or 12 months. And the best part is it's about half the cost of traditional pharmacy prices. And the results are impressive. It's too late for me. My hair was long gone before Keeps was around. But you don't have to be like me. Keeps offers FDA approved hair loss treatments proven to be up to 90% effective. They even offer hair thickening shampoo, conditioner, and styling for made. Most Keeps customers start noticing improvements within just six months. So here's the deal. Hair loss stops with Keeps. If you're ready to regain control of your hair journey, visit keeps.com slash megaprojects for a special offer. That's K-E-E-P-S.com slash megaprojects. And now back to today's video. Intended to eventually connect to the port city of Bar with the Serbian capital of Belgrade, the Montenegrin part of the highway was supposed to turn the Balkan nation into an important transport hub. Even better, the highway's route across the north would equalize the nation's economy, spreading some of the riches of the coastal south to the impoverished and mountainous north. Maybe even connecting some of the millions of tourists who visit the country's beaches each year to explore the interior. For an example of this, we only have to look at the village of Matashevo. A mere 41 kilometers north of the capital as the crow flies, Matashevo had long been semi-cut off from the seat of power. Any locals wanting to travel to the capital had been forced to take a 180-kilometer detour along winding roads notorious for their fatalities. Now with the new highway open, they could do the same drive in under 25 minutes. 
there was only one problem with this way of looking at things. Rather than carry on through Matashevo and towards Serbia, the road finishes at the edge of the village. That billion dollars hadn't been used to forge the 163-kilometer highway from Bar to Serbia's border that everyone had been dreaming of. Oh, no, no, no. Instead, it had been used to build a little over a quarter of the proposed route, a 41-kilometer stretch of engineering genius that now ended at a village with a population of less than 100, fewer than 100 people, most of whom couldn't even afford the highway toll of three and a half euros. For the cost of a fifth of their entire GDP, Montenegro's leaders had created a road to nowhere. Today, two years after that grand opening, the A1 highway remains unfinished, still unconnected to the port at Bar, still many kilometers short of Serbia's border. In fact, there are many who wonder if the remaining 122 kilometers will ever even be constructed. With a new president in power and a new government being formed, it could be that it will forever remain unfinished. But even if that's the case, then the road's effects on Montenegro are going to continue for a long time because, as we are about to see, the Montenegrins didn't just up and build this spectacular folly themselves. Instead, they turned to one of the most powerful nations on earth to deliver their transport dreams China. <laughs> One of the nice things about doing a video about a highway is that the metaphors basically write themselves. For example, we can now open this chapter with a little stylistic flourish by intoning the long winding road to Montenegro's failed highway began way, way back in 2005. Now, for those of you who aren't up on their Balkans politics, that start date is significant because Montenegro at this stage wasn't even a separate country. Instead, it was part of the State Union of Serbia and Montenegro, effectively the last crumbling remnant of a Yugoslavia that had already lost much of its territory in a succession of wars. The brainchild of long-serving Prime Minister Milo Dukanovic, the idea of connecting the port of Bar to Serbia's capital, Belgrade, could be seen as a way of keeping the two nations together, of forging a stronger common identity. But that take would have been spectacularly wrong. Just a year after dreaming up their A1 highway, Dukanovic led Montenegro to independence, the last former Republic of Yugoslavia to head for the exit. Not that Dukanovic had planned to let pesky things like new international borders get in the way of his infrastructure plans. As early as 2007, the new nation was asking French engineering company Louis Berger to conduct a feasibility study on the highway. The British company was likewise invited to carry out studies, while American engineering giant Bechtel signaled its interest to the government in Puerto Rico. Sadly for Dukanovic, though, they all came back with the same and rather depressing conclusion. Building a grand highway across Montenegro's craggy landscapes was just likely to be impossible. Not literally impossible, of course, but in the sense of impossible for a nation with a small economy that doesn't want to bankrupt itself. The French company said the road would simply never see enough traffic to justify its existence. The Brits said the terrain would make the costs unfeasibly high. The Americans offered to instead do a cheaper upgrade of existing roads. But Dukanovic's ruling party was not to be deterred. By 2009, they contracted a Croatian company to do the work. Unfortunately, the company wound up getting its tender cancelled, just as the whole of Europe was plunging into the Eurozone crisis. If Montenegro ever wanted to see its highway built, it looked like it would need to rely on help from outside the West, from somewhere posting extraordinary annual growth, even as growth in Europe fell to anemic levels. Somewhere, perhaps, like China. In 2013, Xi Jinping launched the Belt and Road Initiative, a plan to export Chinese influence by investing in massive infrastructure projects across the globe. To which Montenegro was like, if I do massive infrastructure projects, huh? Well, have we got a massive infrastructure for you, Xi? Within a year, the plan had been forged and contracts had been inked. Montenegro would take out a loan from the Export-Import Bank of China, then use it to hire the China Road and Bridge Corporation to come to their nation and do what the Americans, the British, and the French had failed to do. From China's perspective, the deal was an easy win. Not only would Beijing get a soft power boost and show off its engineering skills, it would also get a toehold in the Western Balkans, a region that had the twin benefits of being both outside the EU and thus able to pursue China-friendly policies Brussels would balk at, but also expected to join in the near future. Indeed, NPR has speculated that Beijing's hope was to establish a sphere of influence right on the EU's doorstep. From Montenegro's perspective, though, the upsides were less clear-cut. Sure, Tukanovic would get his road, but at a hefty price. And we don't just mean the cost of the loan. The contract signed with Beijing granted China the right to seize land and property in Montenegro in the event of a default, while also giving Chinese courts the final say in any disagreements. Signing up to these clauses 
It was such a bad look that the government classified them as state secrets to stop journalists from seeing them. Regardless of any downsides, though, work began in May 2015. It would only be after six long years and a wildly ballooning cost that the A1 highway was at last opened. Now, to be fair to the China Road and Bridge Corporation, it's not their fault Montenegro's highway got so absurdly expensive. Back when the plans were first drawn up, the government, somewhat unbelievably, left a vital turnpike off. Realizing this mistake and rectifying it added a huge chunk to the budget. Perhaps a bigger mistake, though, uh, was the form the loan came in. Despite not being in the EU, Montenegro, like its neighbor Kosovo, uses the euro. But when the loan was taken out, it was denominated in US dollars. As the New York Times wrote, this made Montenegro vulnerable to the vagaries of foreign exchange markets. Since Montenegro hadn't hedged against currency swings, the result was a wild ride on the currency markets, one that partially led to the road's inflated price tag. Then there was just good old-fashioned local corruption. While the majority of workers on the road were from China, the contract stipulated that around 30% of the workforce had to be local. If that sounds fine, just be aware that the process of choosing those local subcontractors was absolutely not fine. France 24 reports that over a third of all Montenegrins hired to work on the highway had links with Dukanovic's ruling party. There were no public tenders and almost no oversight or transparency. This may be why there was such an outcry when a British feasibility study hidden by the government was released after it lost power. The Scott Wilson Group has said that the entire road should cost $570 million, a little over half the eventual price tag. Yet corruption, currency swings, and forgotten turnpikes aren't the only reasons the A1 highway brought Montenegro to the edge of bankruptcy. There were the terms of the loan as well. With interest set at 2% per year, debts to China today take up over a third of Montenegro's annual state budget. Overall, public debt climbed to over 90% of the country's GDP. As a result, Reuters reports that the government was forced to hike taxes, slash benefits, and freeze public sector wages, in effect, undergoing a round of self-imposed austerity. Nor could anyone argue the trade-off was an increase in economic activity. When most governments undertake vast public works projects, the idea is to stimulate the economy and generate growth, all while creating employment opportunities as well of people. But as Prime Minister Dries Nabazovic has complained, in the A1 Highways case, the loan was used to pay a Chinese company to bring over Chinese workers who then took all of their earnings back to China. Sure, Montenegro got to keep the road. Aside from that, though, all they accrued was debt. And what absolutely crazy levels of debt we're talking about here. In 2018, the Center for Global Development placed Montenegro alongside nations such as Djibouti, Laos, Tajikistan, and Kyrgyzstan on a list of eight highly vulnerable countries due to their debt. By 2021, things had gotten so bad that Montenegro was forced to beg the EU for help. In the end, a group of European and American banks managed to restructure the debt and organize enough relief measures that the nation's budget didn't collapse. And we've not even had a chance to touch on the environmental impact of the A1. The way the Tara River Basin was used as a dumping ground for construction materials altering the course of this UNESCO-protected waterway. Remarkably though, all these negative side effects seem to have made little difference to regular Montenegrins. While the highway project has been controversial for years, there's been little pushback against the country financing it. Recent polls show China is more popular among locals than Europe or America. And that all brings us to an interesting question. What happens next? What do you as a nation do when you've just blown a billion on an unfinished stretch of road that's plunged you catastrophically into debt? The answer? Well, apparently you hire China to build yet more highways. Now, back in 2021, Montenegro's then government estimated it would require around 25,000 vehicles a day to raise enough money from the tolls to pay for the highway. At the time, Reuters noted that the busiest days on the busiest sections were clocking only 6,000, barely a quarter of the required amount. When Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty, visited in early 2023, they encountered almost no other vehicles. For a road designed to raise money from tolls, this represents a major problem. With figures like that, it's now thought the government won't even make enough revenue to cover the annual maintenance costs of the highway, thought to be around 77 million euros. 
Nonetheless, that doesn't seem to have dampened the optimism in Montenegro. If anything, the Montenegrin government today seems positively excited about the future. In June of 2023, for example, they exited the deal struck with European and American banks to reduce their debt interests from 2% to 0.88%. The reason given was a strengthening of the dollar against the euro. But there's no guarantee things won't swing the other way again. Perhaps more surprisingly is that they've signed up to yet more construction deals with China. Announced on March the 29th, 2023, the Budva to Tvat Highway is a completely different beast to the A1. Running along the coast between two tourist towns, it'll cover just 16 kilometers and is projected to cost a comparatively small 53 million euros. Given the sheer number of visitors Budva and Tvat both accommodate each summer, it'll almost certainly see heavy usage. Still, it's sort of breathtaking to watch the government in the capital take this step. Especially since 2023 is the first year since independence when Milo Dukanovic is neither president nor head of the governing party. But while he may be out of power for the first time in a long time, Dukanovic's infrastructure dream clearly hasn't died. On the contrary, it may soon gain a whole new lease of life. In July of 2023, Balkan Insight reported that the outgoing government had confirmed new talks with the China Road and Bridge Corporation to build the remaining two sections of the A1, stretching to Bar on the coast and Bajare on the Serbian border. With cost estimates running at least another billion dollars, it seems certain the country will have to take out another loan. Although the China Road and Bridge Corporation has apparently suggested alternatives, one would be a private-public partnership model, or PPP, in which another company would finish building the road, then gain the exclusive right to operate it for 30 years to recoup their investment. It's a model that Montenegro's EU partners are keen to discourage. Talking to Reuters, an official from the European Investment Bank, or EIB, claims that we told them that their PPP model was not bankable, that they would be taking on risks they don't know how to manage. In particular, the fear is that Montenegro will find itself driven deeper into debt and perhaps back to the brink of bankruptcy again. Yet the government seems determined to push ahead, to turn this 41-kilometer road to nowhere into the gleaming, nation-straddling highway Dukanovic first dreamed of back in 2005. Whether this is a gamble that will pay off, or whether this is just an extreme real-life example of sunk costs fallacy, is something that we're going to have to wait and find out. So we've reached the end of today's video, even if the story behind it all is still very much ongoing. It's a story that doubtless many of you will take as just another crazy narrative from Eastern Europe, another weird tale about a megalomaniac leader with a mad vision and the lengths he went to to make it happen. But today's story is perhaps something else too. It's a cautionary tale, a reminder of what can happen when you rely on a distant, autocratic state for your infrastructure. In an era when some point to China and declare that they still build things there. It's worth remembering that it's not always so straightforward. That importing Chinese construction practices to the West won't necessarily get you anything more than a very expensive disappointment. Montenegro may have bet big on Beijing to help with its goals. In the end, though, that bet seems to have left them as broke as indebted as the most foolhardy of gamblers.